I'm doing something uh, kind of strange today. I don't, don't usually do a whole lot of on stream, but I really enjoy it. I really like React content, but I think having a high bar for it is really important. I'm going to be doing some React content today, but I want to make sure it's very, very transformative. I only like reacting to content that I feel comfortable, like I'm adding something to. So for example, today we are going to be reacting to, um, what's his name? Ruffed Rowlet. I'll also be linking this video uh, at the start of the stream and at the end of the, when I finish reacting to it, check him out. Go like the video. Give him some love. If you're watching it via my stream, go like it. Go subscribe if you want to. Um, go spread some love. We're going to be watching this content. So I want to make sure we're actually properly, you know, giving that support, right? Rough Rowlet. He spent 100 days in Pokemon. Here's what happened. This is really, really cool. I love the 100 days series is already is like really, really cool in my opinion. I love when people do that stuff. Um, I would consider myself a little bit of a Pokemon expert. I'm like the biggest English Pokemon uh, content creator. I have... A little bit of hours in the game honestly not even that much i've been playing it for 10 years if you don't for those who don't know for those who are new to the channel 10 years uh around 7k hours if you include alt accounts honestly not that much considering how long i've been playing on and off uh i'm pretty broke right now in terms of cash so ignore that okay boys let me let me slide on that one it's all uh it's in investments okay chill 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 let me go ahead and link this really quick but i'm excited it should be fun there's the video go give it some love in the chat um, I love doing stuff like this. I'm curious to see like what he follows. If he watched my guides, I'm curious to see how he makes progress because progress in Pokemon in 2023 is really, really interesting. You can do a lot from scratch. You can make a lot of money. You can, uh, you can do a lot of stuff really, really fast. If you have the game knowledge, but the game knowledge is kind of unintuitive, kind of tough. That's why my guides are so important. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Start watching and I'll add more from there. Welcome to PokeMMO, where today we're going to be spending 100 in-game days in this multiplayer Pokemon game. PokeMMO is fantastic and features four different- Look at everybody shunting. This is Sutopolis. Everybody's just shunting Magikarp. That's what's going on there. Everybody's shunting Magikarp. Different regions, Kanto, Unova, Hoenn. What is that? PokeMMO is fantastic and features four different regions, Kanto- Is this old, an old Pokemon oh, screenshot? I think this is an old screenshot from the or it's like nope. altered i think it's an old screenshot from the way because yeah these are the old calm eyes and these are the old happy eyes wow this is from like wow what a what a throwback this is from like 2014 2014 i, th I believe the there's the q hat wow hoen and sino as well there's a fully fledged pvp system with ranks and everything you could ask for a lot of the footage he's showing is from like 2014 like this this ui on the smear goal and stuff and the login page was all 2014. As well as an auction house to trade with other players. So today we're going to be spending 100 in-game days trying to complete at least up? two regions in that time. This guy is fast. I respect the fast talker. I thought my fucking video was sped up. He's killing it. Let's get started. And the insane editing and engaging content is many tiers above my own right, our journey begins in hoenn i decided hoenn was going to be where we start from as it is actually the first region i played when i was a kid we have yeah people i'm gonna i'm gonna be pausing a lot let me preface um Starting in whatever region is your favorite is often my recommendation to new Pokemon. I get that question a ton. Uh, Unova is probably the best region to start in, but at the end of the day, the best region to start in is going to be whatever region you enjoy the most and have fun with because that's going to keep you playing Pokemon. Of course, going to head over to May's house because, well, we got to talk to her before we get our starter Pokemon. As for starter choices, it's the original Hoenn starters. And, well, we're going to be going for Mudkip. I did this because, well, we like Your Mudkips. Favorite. Yeah, uh, that's... I love this guy's reasoning. Like, it's good to, like... I understand people want to be efficient in Pokemon, but I think with every MMO, it's a mixture between efficiency and your own personal enjoyment. Make decisions based on that. Swampert's also super solid. Um, Blaziken is technically better. Uh, Sceptile is the worst in this region in Pokemon. Keep in mind the balancing is different from traditional games. Um, Swampert's a solid, solid pick. You just have to watch out for grass type attacks. Pretty basic stuff. Either way, first up is going to be the Zigzagoon, which we easily destroyed Water Gun. Next up, though, well, he wants us to battle May, so we do exactly that. We simply tackle the Trico, and hey, where's she running to, man? Also, this guy looks extremely bald in the game. <laughs> He's doing it for the speed. He knows the trick. It's the speed run strat. Then we actually go to our mom. We get the running shoes and we're right outside of Petalburg where we decide, okay, it's time to hunt for some Pokemon. First, we capture a Lotad, but we're specifically hunting for a Ralt. And just when I want to give up, I run down into this patch of grass and guess what? There it is. 
I think Ralts is a rare encounter here, correct? Rare single. We actually find a Ralts, which I'm gonna be real. I really didn't think we we're gonna be able to get because the actual encounter rate for Ralts in this game is much lower than in regular Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. It ends up being way higher in this game and way harder to actually get it. Same thing for a lot of things in this game. They're just generally harder. Finding a shiny Pokemon, yep. for example, is extremely difficult. He mentions the shiny rate within the first like two minutes, minute and a half. That's impressive. So either way, we're heading into the Petalburg Woods because. I he doesn't mention the rate. He just says it's hard. I also uh, want to get myself a shroomish. It is one of my personal favorites. Okay. Wow. This guy. Okay. I don't know. If, I don't know if you watched my videos. He's already picking up a teleport Pokemon in Ralts. It's it's dead, but he still teleport. He picked up. I mean, Ludicolo is fantastic in the storyline, especially if he gets like a rain team going with Mudkip and Ludicolo. That's really good. Um. Wow. I mean, yeah. Teleport Pokemon. Good versatile mixed attacking storyline Pokemon. It can be mixed, even though it's you know obviously leans towards special. Ludicolo, Shroomish, he's getting himself a catching Pokemon as soon as possible, Spore is really powerful, False Wipe to create consistency and money making down the line, this guy's killing it so far. Course, we're gonna make sure to catch it and add it to the team, afterwards we run into this fella who needs some help dealing with Team Aqua, we defeat of course this guy by using Shroomish, we go for the Stun Spore and then as well as the Absorb, mm -hmm. and for the most part we do this to make sure that we can guarantee, well a little bit of damage and also some experience points for our Pokemon. What the shitty thing with getting Shroomish for the storyline? Um, even though it is, it's still worth doing, but it ends up being a pain. Um, it gains XP as one of the slowest Pokemon in the game. So it has like, what's it fluctuating XP gain. It ends up taking 1.6 million XP to get Trumish to level 100 versus Swampert, for example, needing like a million XP. So it's like, it's like a level, it's like a hundred and a half essentially for most, but it's very, very, a lot of XP. And then, um, also a lot of players think that you need to keep shroomish a shroomish to get spore to like level 38 or 42 i believe that's the case in the traditional games not in pokemon you can just relearn it with like heart scales for like super cheap so it's always worth to evolve your shroomish as soon as possible into brelum don't delay the evolution for spore we want to make sure our whole team is le relatively leveled out after defeating him though and getting ourselves a great ball we head up the route and find a slack off i decide hey let's capture it i love slack off and slacking not a great storyline Pokemon, but I love them. Maybe we can have a slacking later down the line, which is an extremely powerful Pokemon. Then randomly- It can still be useful. Um, it could still be like, you could have choice band slack off in the back for like certain things you're stuck in or to like blast there. It's honestly not a terrible, like, oh, pick up through the, through the, you know, storyline Mon. This fellow right here, Runins or Punins, whatever you want to call him, just randomly- Flu Flunins? <laughs> he hits me up and just decides, hey- Here's your free Dano for whatever reason. I even messaged him. I literally whispered to him and said, hey, why did you just give me a free Dano? Like, I don't get why. But yeah, he decided to give me a free one. I didn't really know what to do with it. The crazy thing is, this is really, really common. Like, even me, for example, like veteran players end up releasing so much pokemon right like I, i've released like thousands of cranidos thousands and like a lot of new players maybe would have really liked that cranidos or really liked this dieno for example like people like veteran players have all these things also i just realized this guy bought from the rp shop immediately he has um you can see he has the uh if i'm just doing a full react i should just do this i might move my webcam up he has the uh the xp all he has the rex xp reamplifier on which is really really funny so this guy actually did um he did immediately go to the rp shop and uh spend a little bit of his money there before uh you know which, which isn't the worst you know it's not like you know is that a bad thing i don't really think so um i will say i don't think the i guess if you're gonna get any item for this i i don't recommend it i, I dude the, the gift shop is really paying for like luxury like paying for like slight 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 like you're not really paying for advantage you're paying for like slight um convenience so i don't really recommend it because i didn't know if i should use but it, it can be nice or i guess if you're super new it kind of takes the place of xp share if you're gonna get anything i guess xp, XP reamplifier is fine but i don't recommend buying from the gift shop unless you just want to support the devs which maybe what that's what he's doing or not didn't know if it was worth it but hey we got a free pokemon and we had our first interaction with someone in the game again he didn't really answer but that's fine a little gray screen edit so we also evolve our boy mudkip into marsh dump and head inside of our first gym challenge it's going to be against roxanne of course she's rolling with those rocks wait he also has wait, wait wait he also has candy he also has candy corn horns what is happening did maybe he got, maybe he got gifted them on stream or something wait in this clip he doesn't have candy corn horns. Game again. He didn't really answer, but and then in the next clip, so we also have he has candy corn horns. Into Marsh Dump. 
I think those are a gift shop vanity. That's and so funny. Side of our first gym challenge. It's going to be against. What people gave him RP? Of course, she's rolling with those rock type Pokemon. First up is going to be Nose Pass. Here we go for the Water Gun, which is able to just do an incredible amount of damage after two hits. Dude, someone must have given him like. 2k RP or something, or 1500 RP. And take down the Nose Pass. So now the Nose Pass is gone, we have to deal with another Pokemon, which is going to be Eren. As you may notice, her team is going to. Eren's a. I mean, he didn't proc it. Eren's a. There's so many sturdy Pokemon. Same with Nose Pass, right? So many sturdy Pokemon in Pokemon in general in the storylines. It's a huge pain, which is actually like why, why Mold Breaker and. Uh, or multi hitting moves can be like a really good thing with Cloister and stuff. It's going to be a little Still bit linked. weird. Uh, and some of the teams in this game are going to be much harder than the normal ones that you run into, as you may notice. Geodude is the last Pokemon. Here we go for Shroomish and Marsh Tomp, just making sure we get some decent damage in there to defeat this thing. After doing that damage, we get ourselves our first Gym Badge, and now we gonna head over to the next location which is going to be in Doofit. Before that though, okay. we make sure to help out this fella from Dev Corp, or I guess Devon Corp, uh, to deal with Team Aqua because they just stole some stuff as well as a Pico, so we take out this fella's Puccina without too much trouble. He doesn't really stand much of a chance against our Rock Smash, and if you're wondering why we have Rock Smash, it's just the move that our Mudkip had from the start. Either way, we make it over to Doofit City with the help of uh, Mr. Briny and go inside to take on the G. This is just storyline stuff. I don't have much to say here. Him is going to be against, of course, none else than Brawly. He uses fighting type Pokemon, which we do have a decent amount of, uh, you know, decent amount of stuff to use against. I will be honest, though. It took me a while to get this far. It took a, a I feel like it's pretty neutral. What's the team time again? Of, you know, actual playtime to be able to defeat this fella because yeah. we needed to do quite a lot of grinding. I actually got stuck for a while. One of the biggest things, another huge question I get is like, oh, like, how do I level up my Pokemon like fast in like early game in Pokemon? And there's really not, an, there's no like, there's no hack. There's no like quick little, oh, like, just go do this. You really just have to run back and forth and grind. Early game Pokemon XP is like, it's not that bad. You really spend like one hour. If you spend one hour grind, just running back and forth grinding for a storyline, you're pretty much set for the whole storyline. Like you'll pretty much be ahead on levels the entire time, maybe an hour or two. It's not that bad. Um. I, I think it's pretty good, honestly. But a, a lot of people ask that question. Like, you really just have to wait until you get access to times five hordes. Wait until you get access to higher level Pokemon. And the access to Surf, access to Earthquake. Like, you can you can do like Magnitude Diglets early game uh, in Kanto, for example. Once you get Diglet Cave pretty fast. Um, but even then, it's like, is it really really worth it? With just, the amount of Pokemon the we have, we didn't really stand much of a chance still. Either way, eventually we defeat his matchups, and we have ourselves another gym badge. We head inside of the Duford Cave where we run into Steven, Steven. and of course, after dealing with him and giving him the letter, it's time to head over to Slateport. Slateport was a nice place. There was a lot of battles here, as you guys may remember from playing Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. There's I wonder if I'll like see or notice all the players. Slateport ends up being the sort of hub world of the hub city of Hoenn, since that's where the dock is at. Usually whatever cities have the dock is the hub world of that region. Loads of free battles. Also, we get into a bit of an altercation with one of the team Aqua Grunts at the museum, and then we, of course, battle against them. These guys don't stand much of a chance. Shroomish has Mega Drain now, which is able to do a decent amount of damage yeah, as well. Yeah, going to dick on all the Live against something like this freaking Carvana, so it doesn't really stand much of a chance against us. Next up, mm -hmm. though, we have the Sharpedoes will get Ice Fang <laughs> for coverage uh, pretty fast, so that might that might not always work. I will say, which is hilarious. Over to the next route, where we run into May, and she has herself a pretty cracked out team. Now, Wait, how did how did he beat the Grovile? The next route, where we run into May, and she has a on <laughs> Shroomish. Shroomish used Headbutt. Oh, okay, what level do you get, Brelum? Did he delay the evolution? Let me actually check in game. What level does? I wonder if he's gonna delay the evolution for Spore and make that mistake. No, no, you get you get Brel at level twenty three. I didn't know Shroomish learned Headbutt. That's very funny. So he gets Brel. I'm really curious to see if he delays it or not. You get Brel at twenty three. Yourself a pretty cracked out team. Now, luckily, it's for a us, huge mistake in Pokemon to delay it. Well, only really the second. But also trip. not the biggest deal. I mean, it's kind of a big deal. Um, you lose out on a lot of base power, base stats, and, and moves and everything, and fighting typing for a long time. We are able to take her down. Now we have Psybeam and uh, whatnot. But it's a reasonable mistake. A lot of people make it for good reason. On our fellow Psy Wave, I guess. On our fellas. And we're able to do a lot of damage with the help of Marsh Tomp, as he does have the Mud Shot and Water Pulse. So taking down the Slugma isn't too much of an issue. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's actually a special battle which you guys can do after, or I guess a, you know, optional battle after you defeat uh, Mei, or actually after you defeat the Roxanne Gym, you can actually battle Mei again, but if you are playing as Brendan and you chose a specific starter, she will have a Torque Cold that she only uses once and never again, which is really weird. Either way, I didn't know that. Okay. Next up, we defeat Wally, and it's time to take on the Gym, but before that, we actually evolve our Shroomish into a Breloom. Yes, dude, 
This guy is making like zero mistakes. Like it's actually really, really impressive. Got himself a free Diano. That's not a, you know, uh, teleport Ralts. Got himself the catching Brelum, and he's really actively using it. He got Swamper. I mean, this is just which is one of my personal favorites of all time. Yeah, I'm so, so I'm glad. So many people that's excited about that. So he's made no mistakes. Going to be our third gym battle, which is going to be aside from spending RP, I guess. But that's even that's optional. Against Watson, he starts off with a Manectric. We go for the Mud Bomb, which is ridiculously powerful and destroys that thing. Next up is going to be. A, well, I guess a Voltorb, but not really much of a problem. We again just go for the Mud Bomb. Voltorb, one of those mons where you think it always has levitates. Same, same with Magneton. Uh, four times weak to ground, you always think it has levitate. And for the most part, I think we just swept through this with Mud Bomb. Yep. Uh, luckily, though, we do have a lot mud of potions bomb. and stuff like that. And we do also rely on. He did, there you go. He did T Wave and Electric. It's a slight mistake, but like it's easy to confuse that because I know it's. I don't know if that was even the case. Could Electric types? I think Electric types could get paralyzed in Gen 5. And a lot of people think of, you know, the original mechanics, but. Um, that was changed. It wasn't, wasn't, um, it was the genie guys that like in PVP that made that change happen. Right. So you couldn't T wave and paralyze electro types to help nerf the, the stupid, the stupid RNG strat that, uh, Aaron Zhang lost to it. Am I remember? I don't know a whole lot about VGC or a whole lot about official competitive Pokemon. I mostly play Pokemon, but that's my, that's what I believe. So I could understand him like not being sure if electric types are immune to T wave or not. That's like something you kind of have to learn. I'm here to Mac punch the last Pokemon, which is going or to wait. I never mind. Ignore everything I just said. I'm an idiot. The Electrite tried to T-wave his Breloom, and it's already paralyzed. That's why it failed. He didn't make a mistake yet. My bad. I made a mistake. I've made more mistakes in this video than he's made playing his playthrough. The Electrike. However, after this, though, we do go and capture ourselves a Nummel. I wanted to have a Fire type on the team, which we were still lacking, and could be useful down the line, especially... I think camera. It could be worse. I think camera is pretty trash. Uh, it is, but it isn't. It's just so slow. It's just so slow. It has a million weaknesses. Um, it's cool in theory because it's like double attacking, you know, it can be offensive. It can be, uh, you know, physical or special it's 40 based at speed holds it back. It's not bulky enough. It's weak to everything. I think, I think camera up is pretty bad, even though it's cool against some of the stuff we might run into, but I thought, Hey, it might be, you can actually, uh, man, what he should have done. And I think it's, I think it would have been worth doing is picking up some lures from the Pokemart and then just, um, in that location i don't think they moved it yet it right useful down uh, the torchic line, especially is right here torchic is literally in this patch of grass uh where he's looking for numal i'm pretty sure um on route whatever it is in game um but you have to buy lores you have to like know to do that it's kind of like it's kind of like some game knowledge stuff which i understand i think it would have definitely worth to go for torchic though actually against some of the stuff we might run into but I over think numal it might be useful Numel's just to get really it bad. but we do also get an awesome Flash thing, which up. is Ralts evolving into Curlia, which is great as we now have a slightly stronger psychic type Pokemon. How do you evolve? After this, we run. Is Delayed Dawnstone? No, no, no. Or Delayed is. is Gar Gardevoir is just level, right? Gardevoir is just level. Level 30. Okay. Run into uh, Falibor Town, where we run into a Swablu. We capture it as having another flying type, or just a flying type Swab in general on the team Alteria's is going to be useful. Solid. We also find Soil a Viper, which I capture, and I'm going to be honest, this Viper came in clutch during some battles, but we didn't end up using it as much as I having wanted a, to. Having a poison type in general can just be a decent backup if you just want like backup mons to fill out your, your line. Obviously, poisoning your opponent's always good. At some point here, after we defeat like the fourth gym in Lava Ridge, I decide, like, hey, let's actually use the global trade system to actually purchase a few Pokemon that could be useful down the line okay he wants to use the gtl also we're six and a half minutes in it's going to be a long reaction video guys i'm sorry i just i, I like Lester, talking. we make okay. it up onto Apologies. the mountain to take on maxi we start off with the water pulse from marsh top which destroys the camera up same thing against the hound yeah, look, i mean and the mighty Ina take it shows you how bad camera up is a rock slide to the gonna, face yeah. which does a decent amount of damage marsh then also is able to go this go bad and go bats in general can be a huge pain he's really over leveled here which is really good it's not like he's like oh he's over leveled what a you know no it's you should do that it's smart he's level 33 verse 24 go bad with the rock slide leaving only the Kadabra to be taken down with a takedown. And then, of course, Mighty Yina needs to be finished off with the takedown as well. After nice. dealing with this, though, of course, we run into Archie, who's just telling us some information. We run into our first horde. Now, this is an interesting thing, though. You actually want to find these hordes in the game because it's a really good method of using to hunt XP. shiny hunt. If you're specifically going to shiny hunt, which is what we do later in the game, it's... Is he going to shiny hunt within the 100? I mean, that, that makes sense. That's the awesome. The best way to actually do it is to find hordes as you're able to run into multiple Pokemon and have a higher chance of running hordes into a shiny one that way. Either way, we then go in and take on the next gym battle. This is going to be against, well, you guys already know her, Flannery. She has herself a freaking Torkoal. We are able to take it down eventually. Then Marsh Tom goes for the Water Pulse against the Camera Up, which takes it down. Same thing for the Slugma. It doesn't really stand much of a chance against the Water Type moves yep. as they are, well, Swap just great. generally super effective against them. Same thing for the Nummel. And we get ourselves a fourth gym badge we run into may and then we decide hey 
It's time to purchase some Pokemon. We get ourselves a Nidorino. But Did he buy a Nidorino off the GTL? That's, that's, I, w I would love to see. I wonder if he'll show the IVs and stuff. He hasn't shown the IVs or nature for any of his Pokemon. I kind of wish he did that. They're not like IVs, EVs, nature. None of that stuff is crucial in Pokemon. It just really, 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 really helps. Also, um, I would I would recommend, especially with nature. Nature is way more important than IVs um, in Pokemon in the storyline generally. I cannot recommend enough going for correct nature like if if, if you have if you find yourself like an adamant nidorino with like 10 attack iv that's solid you would take that over a nidorino with 31 attack iv in neutral nature i really wish you at least like showed nature you could definitely find a cheap nidorino on the gtl even with hidden ability possibly pretty cheap it might not be we call our um, dad norman now norman's team was actually relatively easy such. i would say we mac punch with the way through them we double kick and we also just spam mud bombs against them and eventually we take them all down including the spindle with a flame norman's pretty easy uh the biggest the biggest tech to be aware of with norman in the storyline is to switch out against his slacking like all you need to do is have one sacrifice mod in the back for his slacking as long as you're not playing nuzlocke you, you know who cares will from numble so now we evolve our boy marsh Tomp into of course he lost a lot of pokemon Swampert, in that battle the big Swampert. chunky boy who is really powerful it's a huge upgrade from our Stomp Swampert's. Oh, by the way. Big. And then we make our way to the v Weather Institute. Now, in the Weather Institute, we just have a battle against uh, just one of the admins from Team Aqua. And we also evolve Nidorino into a Nidoking because we do have a Moonstone. Yep. After this, though, we do run into May. She wants to battle us right before we reach uh, Fortree City. We end up losing, I think, the first try against her. But the second time around, though, we are able to, you know, clutch it out and be able to defeat her. We are able to Mac Punch with Breloom, Rock Slide, defeat and destroy her Pikachu, and the uh, Macargo doesn't really stand much of a chance against the surf next up is going to be our next gym badge which is going to be against winona she starts it with alteria but she does also switch out a lot however that doesn't really matter we go for the lava plume here against her tropius and lava plume again against her freaking uh skarmory finishing it off against the swallow now yeah. that we have that gym badge too we try to use the so we're at was that seven gym badges i believe in hoenn i think the winona is seven correct uh, i guess i don't know you want to call them berries seeds whatever you want to call them in the game but they don't Chat, stop DMing me. Thank you. I love you. It doesn't really work unless you do different combinations. After finishing things on Mount Pyre, we head over to Lily Cove City. And before we do anything, we actually evolve Curlia into none else than Gardevoir. Now that we have a Gardevoir on the squad, we're ready to take on May. And I'm going to be real, this battle was in insane, okay? First up, we do get a critical hit against Huge the crit. Raichu. The self-destruct comes from the Clay Doll. Mega Horn goes up against the Sceptile. I mean, he's just destroying it. I thought it was, I thought it was gonna be like tough. I thought it was gonna be close. But it's just monstrously fucking killing me. Swallow falls to our mud bombs and same thing goes for Wayne with only really make I thought he was like, oh it's gonna be really tough. This battle was insane. No, he just remaining now, swept we'll just everything. for the surf and we're able to win. That's but why I'm gonna it was be real insane. it was relatively hard. Next up is the Fair enough. I guess it, I would have liked to see more why, but I mean, I, that battle can be hard. I'm just... Magma yeah. HQ. We go through it relatively quickly. And then it's time to take on, well, the man, the myth, the legend, Maxi. He, of course, starts off with a Crobat. This thing gets hit by a Muddy Water, which is going to do a decent amount of damage before the Surf comes in to destroy the Alakazam. Then, of course, we have to deal with the same thing against the Houndoom. And not really much can be... I mean, not really much can be done by him at this point. We're able to do a lot of damage. And Nidoking is able yeah, to... Yeah, he just has strong... He has wildly strong Pokemon here, like Nidoking, Swamper. Like, to this destroy is enough with to the get through anything, pretty much. After this, though, we have to go over and deal with... I think he's playing... Yeah, dude, he has so many, like, fully evolved. He must have spent a fair bit of time grinding, because look at look at his team. Like, Swampert, Gardevoir, Breloom, like, everything fully evolved. I don't I do not do this when I do storylines. This is... He's really put a lot of time, effort, and care into his team. You know, Archie and his whole squad. We run into some uh, hordes outside of Did Tentacle, which Tentacle hordes? is actually the yet? easiest poke. I don't think he's sweet-scented yet, which is, like, a purposeful way to encounter hordes. He, he could do that. With his team... Um. He has Surf on, I wonder if you get EQ, or if you get, I think you learn EQ naturally on Swampert, correct? Um, or on Nido King. He has so many Pokemon here that he could start doing Horde stuff with. Um, but he needs an XP share. Pokemon to get a shiny of in this game. Kind of. Which is why there's a ton of them in the auction house. Either way, we finish up. Wait, wait, what do you say? Pokemon to get a shiny. We run into some uh, hordes outside of Tentacool, which Tentacool is actually the easiest Pokemon to get a shiny of in this game, which is why there's a ton of them in the auction house. This is a, um, actually, like, very, very slight correction. It's not the easiest. It's the most common. Um, many, many shinies are like, yeah, but that's, yeah. 
They a lot of them have the same difficulty. It's it's the it's not the easiest. It's just the most common because of all the water, because of all the storyline, and it has a times five horde near PC, which many Pokemon do. There you go. Either way, we finish up things with Team Aqua and head over to Moss Deep City. Here we're going to have ourselves our penultimate, our second to last, if you want to call it, gym badge, which is going to be against. Tate and Lisa. Tate and Lisa do double battles, so this is going to be a relatively difficult one for us because they have some Pokemon that can just be really annoying. However, the battle ended up being pretty okay, not gonna lie. It wasn't super difficult. We didn't really have to rebattle them after the first try, if I remember correctly, but we do have the Surf, which does do damage to, of course, every Pokemon, including our own, and then Altaria comes in clutch okay. with the Dragon Pulse because, yes, we have an Altaria now. Our Swablu has evolved by this point, and... Okay, there's another, there's another there's just storyline stuff. To I'm, gonna, I'm gonna skip to past the gym. Not all that has to be done. I, I, I am the worst storyline. When it comes to storylines, I offer nothing. I'm not a Nuzlocker. I don't replay storylines over and over again. I have some basic general Pokemon knowledge, but, like, when it comes to grinding shiny hunting etc that's where i can actually like uh input we have a lot left to do on this journey one of those things is to go we're 10 and a half minutes into the video go and deal with team aqua and team magma up in the looking for him to finish the story I, I might just skip i might just skip Ooh, what does he get which was the only reason we won that battle now once we sorted those things out i decide hey it's time to buy ourselves some in-game items so okay, i thought he had, okay dude how many re reward points did this guy so get now once we sort of he has 500 those things out i decided here someone gave him candy i don't know if people gave him it he also has donator status he also has donator status i don't know if he just streamed and people like gifted him a ton of stuff or if he bought all the rp himself I sell some in-game items um, so I he's bought like three things with rp so far he has donator status which i do not recommend to new players donator status is a huge waste of money to new players please don't please don't go dono um if you're new it, it, it's not worth the like xp gain it's super slight you get dono if you're like a huge shiny hunter and you're trying to do a bunch of shiny hunting and even then it's like a pretty extreme dono is like very 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 like wasting your money um only do so if you want shiny chance it's not like a hugely like a beneficial thing purchase a butler outfit because hey we like to look butler fancy all right we just like to look fancy. i don't see that used very much in game uh, i don't i don't love the honestly if i were to rate this fit right now whoo we do fashion contests sometimes um i do like the candy corn the candy corn horns match the eyes kind of that's kind of a cool look um i don't know if it fits with the butler thing at all i guess the red little uh bow tie kind of works i would give this a solid 7.2 out of 10 fancy and this outfit part of war also doesn't do anything Makes us look fancy. Also, you may have noticed we have candy corn horns because I thought they looked cool. He mentions them. So, yeah, he has, he's bought an XP reamplifier, donator status. Dude, this man has spent like six mil or something in, in RP. Like actually like five or five or six mil in RP uh, or like 20 bucks. Either way, we now have dive. And so we go inside of the cave here and deal with, of course, Archie. He has a Crobat. We go for the, well, I guess, Dragon Pulse against the Sharpedo because he does end up switching out. And that's one thing you'll notice in these battles is they often switch out Pokemon. They nonstop do switch outs and their teams are way stronger than the ones in the original game. So their yep. teams will be way, way stronger, stronger. And sometimes they will use teams for, you know, the most OP version of their teams will be used. Either way, now that we yeah, I think I always say Pokemon is the perfect middle ground between um, traditional Pokemon and like hardcore Nuzlocke. Like Pokemon isn't going to be as hard as like Emerald Kaizo, like not even close, right? But it's also going to be way harder than like traditional Pokemon storylines. It's like right dab in the middle. I think it's a really we good middle We made it ground. over to Rayquaza up on Sky Pillar. We're able to summon him over to Sotopolis City to deal with, of course, Kyogre and Groudon. After doing Sotopolis, Sotopolis, how do you say it? All of this, we then go up the next... I say Opolis. Next day and are ready to take on the final gym badge. We see a bunch of trainers there by the water. What they're doing is actually shiny hunting for Magikarp. Oh, he called... Dude, how, who gave this guy all of his knowledge? Was it his stream chat? Did he watch my videos? Dude, this guy has a shocking amount, shocking amount of Pokemon knowledge. Maybe he just learned it after the fact. Maybe this is like all knowledge he learned within his 100 days. Um, He has a shocking amount of knowledge for like this point in the game. This is pretty impressive as there is magikarp you know five i guess horde spawns there specifically hordes. so a lot of people are hunting for those because yep. it's the best it's the only times five horde in the game for carp and it's the best one a lot of people want carp a lot of people want gyarados especially since they're obviously not going to have the free shiny gyarados for, in johto um people might want to get like the johto for nostalgia in preparation for johto or it, the magikarp shiny you, you know what i'm saying it's one of the easiest ones to go for and it's close to yep. a pokemon center in case you need 
I'm Spy Horton here, PC baby. To reset your PP on Sweet Sense. Either way, now that we've dealt with that, we go and take on uh, Juan. Of course, his team doesn't really stand much of a chance against us. I will be honest though, it was a bit of a struggle in the beginning until I figured out a, you know, a way to actually get through it. We make it over to Evergrande City and of course the Victory Road. Here we're going to be able to battle against Wally. You guys know Wally, the man. Dude, I've got to watch. Fuck, I still to this day have to watch a guide every time I go through any Victory Road in Pokemon. It's like I'm a seven-year-old all over again trying to get through the, for, for, for the first time. I can't stand him. The guy I hate Victor Rhodes. comes in he, with uh, my Psychic brain. from, well, all of our Pokemon. We have a Metagross as well now, which I purchased from the shop. And so we finally reached the Elite Four. How is this E4 Elite Four battle? Member in this case is going to be the easiest one. It is up against this. Also, in Pokemon, huge thing to note. Um, during your, like, storyline E4 run, every time that you, um, I should put chat box above so I can actually see you guys on screen. That'd be Pog. There we go. Now I can see you guys. Happy Pog. Um... Every time you defeat one of the like E4 leaders, you get healed. So that's why I constantly recommend if you ever see someone leading with a Stealth Rock Sturdy Setter. Now chat's just spamming Joel whenever they. Have, okay, anyways, that was not worth it. Um, you'll see a lot of people, and I recommend it a lot. Sturdy Stealth Rock leads against the Elite Four, super, super, super good, and it takes like two minutes to go catch one. Right? Um, anyone doing the uh, if you're stuck in the Elite Four, you want help with the Elite Four, Sturdy Stealth Rock lead Pokemon. You'll get healed after every battle. Setting up Stealth Rock is super, super good. You hit a bunch of pokemon for high damage you break sturdies you break focus sashes sacrificing a team slot for a stealth rock setter is so good this fella and, and he easy. doesn't really stand much of a chance i'm gonna be real he does, yep. doesn't really stand much of any chance because we're able to use probat wildly underrated uh storyline pokemon i remember dude when I, that's why when my zubat when my zubat died in my in my nuzlocke i was really sad because crobat is so 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 good Crobat, which we also purchased from the even though he's really frail, he's just like strong enough to where it works. I guess in game shop or the auction, we purchased him from there from another player and are using him. And we just simply need to spam any of our, I guess, bug type moves and just cross poison and stuff like that. And we're able to take him down with the help of just Crobat and Nido King. So the first battle is an easy one. However, next up is going to be he's just playing a lot of it. Look at his Pokey, like he's at the Elite Four and only has 3k. So he's been spending a lot of his Pokeyen on um, items and Pokemon. And this is actually a, a piece of advice that I, I've probably, I think, switched up on. For a long time, I always told players to like try to save as much Pokeyen as you need. Um, like, try not to spend too much Pokeyen on healing items and stuff. And I mean, heal, that is still true mostly. Um, try not to spend too much Poke, Pokeyen on completing the storyline because it's only like a temporary thing. You want to save it for late game stuff. However, you're able to make so much Pokeyen so fast nowadays, like 200k an hour, like, within like a couple hours off a fresh account um catching abros and stuff like that um that i feel like that may no longer be the case i think it may actually be worth it to like blow through your pokey end to some extent if you know you have the mentality to grind later on for pokey end um you might want to like not spend as much as this guy 3k at the elite four is pretty brutal it means he spent every like dime he had you should have around like 100 250k by the time you reach the elite four um so that's pretty brutal but I would say it's still definitely really, really good and really worth to have to like spend a fair bit of Poke Yen to help you complete the storyline faster. I think that is more worth it nowadays, and I was definitely way opposed to that in the past. Something I've kind of flipped on a little bit. Be Phoebe, and she uses Ghost type, so we go for the bite here while using Crobat. We're able to do a decent chunk of damage just using Crobat and be able to take down most of the team, but it's not enough because he does fall eventually. So we use. We have Weavile on the back as well. I mean, this is going to sweep, and you should have a. Uh... You'll get healed after this. We will so let me fine. use nasty plot and then punishment to take nasty plot. Isn't punishment physical? Could be wrong. Um, I don't think nasty plot plus punishment actually does anything. Or did wait? Did he? Did he? Down the rest. Not enough because he does. Yeah, we will so use. We will let me use nasty plot and then nasty punishment plot. to take down the rest of the team by kind of hyping. Is punishment special? I don't actually know. Nasty plot on Weavile is correct. Weavile's generally known. Let me double check. I don't, is that, I don't know. Maybe I, you know, I don't know every little move. I don't, I know a lot of obviously the main competitive stuff, but I don't only really find punishment. Uh, punishment in game. Where is it at? Falling for content. Kek W. Punishment. Do. I'm looking on Baynet. I'm not looking at the right move pull. Got like a Weavile. What am I doing? You almost never see. So Weavile's base physical attack. Here I can show you really quick. Weavile's base physical attack is 120. And its base special attack is 45. So using it as a special attacker is pretty brutal. Um, but if you have the correct move pull, I probably still wouldn't do it. 
Um, I'm also pretty sure punishment's physical. Yeah, punishment's physical. So nasty plot is doing nothing here, unfortunately. So slight little mistake. Um, um, actually nerd emoji. Uh, yeah. And you know, boosting ourselves up. However, I make a You're mistake by anything, using nasty but... plot too many times. Um, uh, and end up just losing our boy there. So waterfall. Yeah. So I don't. I don't so it seems like he didn't catch it. Um, nasty plot didn't do anything there. Nasty plot is just special attack. Um, I'm um, actually. Um, nerge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Big mistake. But like. Who cares? From Swampert has to come through to do the work instead, which it does, and so we're able to now take on the next battle. In this case, she goes for, I guess, Glalie right off the bat and just uses Explosion, mm -hmm. which is not fun because uh, we take a lot of damage. Her Frost Lance, though, doesn't really stand much of a chance because we just spam Punishment, which is incredibly powerful. Rock Smash against the next Glalie does also... How does Punishment work? Now I need to read this move. Uh, this attack's power increases... The more the target has powered up with stat changes. Look at... Wait a minute. Can we pause for a sec? So that means... I get what he was doing with Nasty Plot. With Nat... Look at... Look at this, dude. I'm over here getting schooled. I'm over here playing Pokemon, you know, for 10 years for apparently no information. I'm over here getting schooled by this guy jumping on the game. Obviously has a lot more uh, diverse Pokemon knowledge than me. Let me just shut up maybe and, and watch, his, <laughs> watch his content because I need to learn something apparently. So I, I would like, is it really worth, I mean, I don't know the boost. I have to check up the, the stat boost for punishment. And guess what? We got ourselves another victory. Next up though, is going to be Drake. He of course is using dragon type Pokemon. We destroy him with the blizzard from our boy here. We while, which we do twice. Then we, we while we got to deal with Salamence, which ended up being a li really big problem. And it was actually the reason I had to rebattle the elite four multiple times. And we had to do then a bunch of ways of making. Oh, so we did battle the E4 multiple times. Okay. I kind of wish you would have showed more money of the failures. But I guess that could be boring. To be able to afford a bunch of revives and stuff, because otherwise... Okay, we're 14 and a half minutes in. This is a 100 days challenge, and we're just beating the Elite Four. So I want to know what he does after. We just couldn't beat him. Next up, though, is the battle against, well, the man you guys all know. It's Wallace. Here, in this case, we have Crobat again doing a lot of the work. We go for the Cross Poison. The, you know, I, I, I just honestly, the Cross Poison is all we really do. It does most of the damage. Yep. It's able to do most of the actual, you know, clutching through the battle. Good. Also, X's are I can't really deny. Good. We end up using that move quite a lot as well. But Cross Poison takes down a Gyarados, and there it is. We defeat the first region, or at least a champion. Congrats. Region. Your first region. How, okay. Also, what is happening? He must be getting. Yeah, he has an unread mail. He must be getting like tons of donations from viewers, which I understand. Um, if you want to, you know, more power to you. Um, he has like he was at three k before, and now he's at one twenty six k. And all he's done is he hasn't gone for any money making. All he's done is um do the elite four to our knowledge, which you don't get paid for until you beat the elite four. So I don't know what's he's he's probably just getting donations. Um, your first region should be your hardest. I don't know, like, oh, that's a that's a tough question. Do you count like? I personally take issue with this. Maybe maybe he'll talk about it. And maybe he didn't make donations. Maybe. Man, like, with a loop from, I guess he said, like, I played Pokemon for 100 days. With a loop from 100 days, are you okay with, like, someone getting donations towards that progress? I, I don't, I don't love that. Um, maybe he'll talk about it. Um, he did mention that he bought the 500 RP, but it seems like he's, like, getting donations and, like, getting... And spending RP and like kind of maybe he's not marking this part. He kind of just says, you know, I played for 100 days, but I kind of feel like it's like a progress series with stuff like this. And I feel like he's like getting a lot of outside help with this. Kind of like if like a, how do you explain this? If like enough World of Warcraft, like hardcore, like you could get traded like a bunch of gold or like something like that. Like it's, it just seems a little funny. I don't know. So we're done with the first location. We'll However, like I said, we can go through multiple regions in this game. So I decide, hey, congrats to him though. I'm beating the first one. Your first line is the hardest. Let's go and explore a little bit. But before we do any of that, though, we actually find an alpha, well, I guess. He did an alpha encounter. That's cool. Raid is the wrong word to use, but basically an alpha. He did an alpha encounter. Horn. Uh, alpha swarm. Uh, actually, it's not an alpha horn. It's alpha swarm. Because there's a bunch of outbreaks of alpha Pokemon. Now, alpha Pokemon, you guys may remember them from Pokemon Let's, uh, Legends Arceus, not Let's Go Pikachu Eevee, but Legends Arceus, where they specifically are Pokemon that are stronger than, you know, normal ones. And what you see right here is a bunch of players trying to get their hands on these alpha Pokemon. It's also possible he literally grinded a shit ton for all the Pokeyen off. Yeah, and we just didn't see it. Pokemon, because if you can get a shiny one, then you have a really cracked out Pokemon. You can see there's an Alpha Swarm that's been spotted on Route 100. Or if he wants to, like, buy the RP, like, just... I think it's just... You should make that known. Like, oh, I didn't get all this from hard work. I just, like, bought the... Which is, I mean, just let it be known. I don't know. Which is where we currently are. Now, after dealing with that... I don't know decided, if it's okay, that Let's deep, check out the PvP section, because this game does have PvP rewards for you competing in different PvP. Yep. Over, like, oh, you... The PvP rewards are pretty not great i will say are we talk about all they probably should be buffed as someone who doesn't pvp that much and like it's not my even i can see like pvp rewards need to be buffed pvp players get um 
shafted a little bit in Pokemon, uh, even though the PvP system is fantastic. You, you, etc. There's also random battles, which are my personal favorites. However, I ended up losing every time I tried, and then I randoms are really fun. Okay. Losing, wait, is he losing randoms or is he queuing for OU? There's over like OU, UU, etc. There's also random battles, which are my personal favorites. However, I ended up losing every time I tried, and then I decided, okay, well, we're done here. Let's go over to Kanto. It's yeah, dude, getting into Pokemon PvP is really, really, really hard. I have a video covering it, like beginner's guide to PvP. You gotta be uh, able to lose. You gotta be, it's, it sucks. Like it's not gonna be worth for everybody to get into PvP. It's really, really hard. Your average Pokemon PvP -er is gonna be so much better than your average Pokemon Showdown player. It's kind of absurd. As someone who has played both, I'll easily climb in Showdown, but I'll get like the shit beat out of me by like 500 Elo, which is like the what the starting Elo, like. 1,000 is the starting ELO on Showdown, correct? And then, like, 500 is it on uh, Pokemon. 500 ELO players on Pokemon are, like, four times better. Like, they're equivalent to, like, 1,800 uh, Showdown players or, like, 1,600. It's, it's 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 insane, the difference. It's time to explore on another average. region. So, now that we're in Kanto region, well, we get ourselves, of course, a starter Pokemon is going to be Bulbasaur, but I make a decision, which is kind of maybe a weird one. I decide, okay, let's actually make this a bit more fun. Okay, he did go immediately to a new region um, instead of doing any sort of end game grinding he did one alpha encounter i don't really recommend this but it's also not bad if you just want to if you're having fun if you're enjoying storylines i don't like storylines um so i i like i i would take a break here i recommend like do a storyline take a break try some end game grinding like i recommend like do one storyline do some shiny hunting do one storyline do some ev training like trying to like try everything because then by the end when you complete all four storylines you might understand what type of player you are and what kind of content you want to do by the end of it at end game we have a bunch of money left from the other, you know, journey. So let's buy every single starter Pokemon from this region, right? So this is a very fun thing to do, and I super encourage this. It's just a blast, just a good thing. Pod cool. That would be Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charmander, and Pikachu. I decided let's use those guys for this journey. Yep. Just use all the starter Pokemon because it would be fun. This is a very fun thing to do. He has he has look, look, SP reamplifier on again for this storyline. So first up is cool is going to be of course, none else than Brock himself. The man is just ready to take us on. He doesn't really stand much of a chance. We'll go with the Wine Whip, which does a lot, but it's not enough to defeat him. So Bubble from Squirtle is necessary to finish up this battle, which it does exactly against the Onyx. Next up though, of course, he has the Geodude. Same thing here. We go for Bubble. He does have Sturdy, which means he's going to survive on one HP, Sturdy's which pain. is just annoying more than anything. We know we're going to win this battle, none, like no matter what, because we do have both the Bulbasaur and the Squirtle in our squad, but eventually we defeat him. And now we have ourselves another Gym Badge, which is our yep. first Gym Badge in Kanto. As we're about to leave, we get ourselves Running Shoes and evolve our boy Bulbasaur into Ivysaur. Yeah, this is a great example of like once you have your first region done, now you can buy Pokemon to like help us and everything. Um, I am curious. I really hope this whole video isn't storyline runs. We're 17 minutes in, and all we've seen is storyline stuff. But I guess there's progress like intermittently between. Um, I wonder if he'll mention utility Pokemon, smear goals, HM friends. Um, saving up Pokeyen, money making methods. I wonder if he'll mention because well, what else would it evolve into? Stuff After doing besides, that, we then make it over to Cerulean. Kind of the traditional. So Pokemon store, like what what anybody could do if they played Pokemon, right? But heal ourselves up before we go. I want to see what he learns about Pokemon, not Pokemon, right? Take on Misty, who uses, of course, water type Pokemon. Now, her team starts off with a Psyduck. In this case, we go for the Razor Leaf, which is able to do a, a lot of damage and take down the Psyduck in a singular hit, and it's super effective. We get yeah. used, though, by the Starmie. Starmie, actually, dude, even if you go Bulba, Starmie can be a huge pain for uh, Bulbasaur. So, the fact that he has Ivasaur, he is like grinding stuff really hard. So that ends up. I think he's getting the boosts from Dono and the boost from XP Ramplifier. All the RP the he spent is really propelling his progress and making it a lot easier as well. But the Razor Leaf and the Seed Bomb are. Like, this guy is having. It's funny. He, he talked about, like, the storyline being difficult. And, like, he, this is, like, he spent enough money to where this is the easiest you can make the storylines, pretty much, aside from, like, just full on strats of Crocodile and Gyarados and stuff. Um, but, like,. This guy is having the easiest new player experience possible, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, he paid the more power to him, you know? It's not, it's not even like, it doesn't make it like a, it makes it like, I want to preface, it makes it like 10% easier. It's not like he's like OP, easy cheesing now. Enough to defeat the Stormy like at this 10 point. Difference. We have only one more Pokemon to deal with, and that's going to be Goldeen. Now, Goldeen, same thing here. We don't really take much damage from it. Seed Bomb is honestly just enough to take it down with a singular hit being super effective enough to defeat it and give us, uh, I guess, the second gym badge of Kanto, but our, I guess, 10th gym badge in total. Anyway, Charmander yep. rolls into Charmeleon, so now we have a stronger Pokemon, especially against the battle that's about to come. It's going to be on the Nugget Bridge. You guys already know it. It's against Gary or. This fight can be tough. Um, him getting Pidgeotto here is a huge pain. It will spam Gust, and I think it might have. I don't think it has Tailwind here. Does Ooh, it? Really it can be annoying. Actually, let me know in the comment section down below, guys. Do you call him Gary or Blue? Or do you just refer to the version based? The Abra is free. Using a good tech against this fight is using the Abra to set up like a growth or using the Abra to set something up against his team is really good because all it knows is teleport right now. On what you are playing or watching or consuming. Like if you're playing the game, or... maybe you call him Blue. Maybe if you're watching the anime, you call him Gary. Like what he's called in the, in the anime. If you're reading the manga, maybe you call him Blue as well or Green. I, I always nickname my rival Stinky. I don't really know. People really have different names for him. Either way, this battle ended up being relatively okay. Then we make it over to Vermilion City and I realized, oh, hey, we can already travel back to other regions from this port but i decide okay let's not do that instead let's take on gary again and this time around though we're able to defeat him we 
go for the takedown, we go for the takedown again, and we just keep spamming flamethrower from Charmeleon for the rest of the squad. This fight was brutal in my Nuzlocke. The Derry SSN fight halted me for a long time. Uh, it was really, really scary. And I'm going to be real, Charmeleon ended up being kind of our strongest Pokemon throughout. Like, we started off really good with the Ivysaur. And I will say, um, Charmeleon slash Charizard, the worst starter in Kanto by far. Um, I understand why I can feel strong here and feel strong in certain situations. Um, Blastoise is by far the best because of Shell Smash for, like, big battles and stuff. Charmander or Charmeleon is pretty, like, solid, I guess, all around um, for the most part. But, like, I think Venusaur and Blastoise end up being way stronger. I have a video explaining, like, what are the strongest Pokemon in each region in Pokemon that goes over all that in, like, a lot more detail. Actually... Check that out if you're interested. A lot of people will say, oh, no, Venusaur or Bulbasaur is the best because it's strong against the first three gyms. And, blah, and you can just catch fire. I, I did the arguments. I go over them in detail in the video I talked about. Um, I promise you, uh, Squirtle, Blastoise, Shell Smash, so good. He became our clutch Pokemon. Either way, next up is Lieutenant Surge. He starts off with the Voltorb. This thing doesn't really stand much of a chance against the flamethrowers that come through, so we're able to just kind of destroy him with that. However, he does have Citrus Berries and all of them, and this is, again, another thing you will notice in this game, is that all the freaking gym leaders and the Elite Four use really, like, cracked out stuff on their Pokemon. Like, they will have really cracked out movesets, like proper competitive movesets on these things, which yep. makes them way stronger than your... Like this, I remember my Nuzlocke. This Raichu has Grass Knot in almost, in one shot my Golem, but it procs sturdy. That shit's terrifying. If you, like, there's so many things around. You could go get Golem, uh, Geodude. You could go get, like, a Diglett. There's so many things. Like, this Raichu and this Electro-type gym will bait you into a false sense of security and obliterate you. Usual challenge against a gym leader. It feels more like you're playing a, a hard mode of a game. Nonetheless, though, I decide, okay, I'm gonna go back to Hoenn because I wanna do some shiny hunting. Now, let me explain what I do here. Basically, the way things work in PokeMMO with shiny hunting is that the actual chance of you finding a shiny is 1 in 30,000, which yep. is ridiculous, by the way. It's a really, really, really low chance. It's balanced, but ridiculous to be finding a shiny pokemon so what people do is horde hunting to do this all you really need is well sweet scent which is a move that will basically summon more or less okay pokemon Mo knowledge five pokemon or hordes this is also a great location marl is a fantastic shiny fantastic spot whether you like marl or osmoral this is a great great beginner spot and then it will spawn for you so and it's really early in hoenn what you gotta do is just Perfect. full odds in right you gotta try to full odds but yeah, as you might notice i also have donator status which is basically by donating and supporting the game you gain basically a 10 percent chance boost of actually getting a shiny pokemon yep. and you can Makes it one out of 27,000. Also buy a shiny charm, which gives another 10% of a boost. However, after trying for a- With shiny charm, makes it one out of 24,300. Very, very, very long time. I'm gonna be real. I got no shiny and I gave up. So after give- I'm so curious how long. Oh man. He said very, very, very long time. I wish I knew how long. Um, do here. Basically the way- is it, is it gonna be from like 214? You see nighttime in game? Not the really to... big move that will hold on. But yes, oh, back, I'm gonna- We're not really gonna- 5 a.m. the next day? Dude- Three hours in game? How long is that? How long is that in IRL time? Like an hour and a half? Two hours? I maybe it's the maybe he did like a full maybe he did like multiple days. I don't know. I'm really, really, really curious to see how long he spent shiny hunting. Gonna get lucky with the shiny, so I might as well just continue our journey for now. For those who don't know, the average hours, if he like with Dono here, you get around a thousand encounters per hour if you're being efficient. You could be a lot slower, it depends. Obviously, on like your skill and your mechanics and your APM and yada yada. Um you he should be getting a shiny on average, after 27 hours at that location with Dono status. Oh, sorry, we had over to 27, 30 hours. That's that's like, and that's like the uh, the easiest kind of shunt in Pokemon. I think 30 hours or so. I guess Celadon City to take on Erica and her grass types. First up on her end, of course, is going to just be a mix of Pokemon. She starts off and sends out her freaking. Oh, dude, I hated this thing so much. So she sends out a freaking Blossom. Now I end up not being able to defeat it with the first move, which was Wing Attack, which I thought was going to be enough, but it really wasn't. So now that we have Charizard, because Charmeleon has a. Why do you Wing Attack and not Flamethrower to dodge Potion? By this point, we go for the Flamethrower. And it's able to finally defeat her. So, ah, uh, the Aka Bear. I wonder if he knew about the Aka Bear from like Wiki or something. Yo, Sensei, thanks for priming. Thank I appreciate that, man. Money, Next up, though, is going to be the Tangela. He'll go for Flamethrower. Less than three. I don't know why he'd. Wing attack. I know, obviously, Blossom has a really high special defense. Maybe it is worth the Wing Attack and the Flamethrower. I feel like I'd probably just Flamethrower first. And then Flamethrower and Extra Time into, into No Aka Berry. Again, it's pretty much a one hit KO. But then we also do the same thing. Yeah, Tangle is a huge defense wall. Um, just, just crumpled by any special fire attack. Against the rest of the team. Victory Bell doesn't really stand yeah, much of a chance. There's storyline stuff. Kind of now that he doesn't really have, I guess, Once again, uh, Jesse and James to really hang out with. And Valplume doesn't really stand much of a chance either. Now that we defeated her, we can have Pokemon obey us up to level 46. And we can also make our way to the next location. But as I'm on my way to defeat Team Rocket and Giovanni, this random guy. Oh no! No! He got baited! Oh no, don't do this. There are so many random people. I don't know. Dude, people who do this are, are actual heathens. Um, never, ever, 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 ever accept a random battle. There will be these, like, weird type of like casual but like 
they're like casual players who like aren't good at the game, don't know the name of the game, but like want to feel like veteran or want to feel like superior players. There are people who will go around like with like high level Pokemon and like randomly challenge noobs to like PvP battles. And like they have no idea what they they absolutely could win. It's like what happens is people who like can't play PvP ranked in Pokemon will like get a high level casual shit team and then like go challenge random people to duels and try to like stroke their ego. It's it's so weird. Don't get baited by these. There's like this is like a specific type of player that has existed in Pokemon since like 2012, dude. It's been around forever. It's Just so funny. Values, EBC, and people then... who like aren't good enough to play PvP but want to like try to dick on noobs. B decides. Okay, I want to have a Wi-Fi battle against you, so I say yes. But oh I'm no, real. this was a mistake. By yeah, he's gonna. Is he going to get wiped in Team Rocket Hideout back to the PC? I mean, because I did not have a proper competitive team, whereas I think this- This guy had a crocodile and shit. This, this this guy is- This is not a proper competitive team, I'd argue. Obviously, this guy- But it's w way stronger than, the, you know, this guy's team. Badoof Pikachu, War Turtle, versus Crocodile Garchomp, Volcarona, Gyarados. Come on, man. This guy is a dick. Hey, ZBC, if you're watching this video, go- Call your mom. She misses you, okay? Anyways. This guy did. His team seemed pretty cracked out, and he seemed to know what he does. And I'm gonna be real. I'm not very good at competitive battling. I'm extremely bad. Thankfully, you don't get sent back to the PC if you lose a battle like that. I wasn't... I honestly wasn't sure. Uh, so that's good, at least. Battle, you so used to. You used... That used to happen. Where people would challenge new players. They'd battle and lose and get sent back to the PC. That used to be how it would work. Bear with me as I'm saying that. Either way, next up is going to be Giovanni. Here we go for the Air Slash with Charizard. Air Slash is honestly the move we ended up using most during Kanto and most of our battles as we're able to Air Slash through most of the team. Flamethrower does come in clutch as well against the Nidorino Nidorina. But after that, we defeated Giovanni and now we can head over to the next location. We run through, of course, Saffron City because we were able to find the T and give it already to the uh, police guard. And then it's time to defeat our rival again. We go for the Air Slash to go through most of his team. And that's exactly what does the work, right? Finishing off most of them with just Air Slash and Flamethrower. Leaving we go for the What's the level? Yeah, he came, he did like a weird order. So he came back to Lavender Town and now he's level 42 and the is level 27. Air Slash to go through most of his team. And that's exactly what does the work, right? Finishing off most of them with just Air Slash and Flamethrower. Leaving us now with a giant Snorlax in the way that I decide to capture because Snorlax is a cool Pokemon. Okay, we have like four minutes left in the video and I will say he's mostly just on storyline progress, which is a little disappointing, but that's also like, that's also like most, like, Pokemon Mo starts once you finish all four storylines one of those Pokemon that fits into our team as like one of those like standard I'm gonna be real our team is very basic okay it's a bunch of starter Pokemon but I think it's fun all right I enjoy it I'm one of those people now it's time to take on Koga as we make our way to Fusion City his it's he's 100% correct it's just fun and there's nothing wrong with it it's just fun to use starters wheezing self-destructs which takes itself out and also takes out our Snorlax it's also like it's something you can do in Pokemon you can't do in the original games which I think is really like where Pokemon shines taking advantage of things that like you always wanted to do but couldn't really do for example getting an Alakazam at level 16 like before um you even fight Misty. You can do that in Pokemon, which is like trades or trade evolutions and trade Pokemon. I always recommend, like, I encourage people to use trade Evo Pokemon a ton because you can't, you couldn't really do that as a kid. Like, not many people had the trade link cable. You didn't really have, like, oh, you know, I just got Kadabra. So now I can, like, immediately go trade my friend at school. Like, no, like, no, like, it was, it was a pretty difficult thing to, to do. Go for the flamethrower, which defeats the muck, leaving us with the Crobat to go up against. How many kids did you guys know that had, like, Golems, Alakazams, or Dengars on, like, their Fire Red game? Not many people, if any, right? As well as the Venomoth. But Venomoth, of course, goes down to a single flamethrower. Also, Venomoth is a weird Pokemon, man. It always felt like weird how it how it looks compared to its pre-evolutions and stuff and Butterfree versus it. They I don't know if I agree with that, but fair. I feel like they should have been switched. Either way, we make it in into the Silph... I like Venonat and Venomoth's line, but I understand. So, uh, headquarters, here we deal, of course, with uh, our rival, as well as Giovanni, who doesn't really stand much of a chance. He has a Haunch Crow, which I think is a Pokemon he uses later down the line. I'm pretty sure he uses that in, like, I would guess, the Generation 4 games. He doesn't use it before that, I'm pretty sure. But either way, he also has a Kangaskhan. In this case, we take it down with not more than just a bunch of flame This stream resolution just changed? What just happened? It was zoomed in on the fight that, here. Sure. But either way, he also has a Kangaskhan. And then zoomed out to the full. And in this case, team. we take it down with not more than just a bunch of flamethrowers as well yeah. as a bunch. No, of that's a bad thing. It's now fine. we're going to go and take on Sabrina. She is, I guess, the one of the last few. We only have three gym leaders left to go, which is Sabrina, of course, Blaine, and Giovanni himself. I am so curious to see his Blaine fight. Blaine is like one of the hardest. I'd probably argue the hardest gym leader in Pokemon Mo. Um, Whitney may take that once they add Johto, but Blaine's really Blaine. tough because of his, co his coverage is insane. Um, he's an electric or fire, excuse me, fire type gym leader that has like absurd electric type coverage for, for water types and absurd, like solar beam in sun grass type coverage for ground types. He has like perfect on every Pokemon, even close combat and stuff and extreme speed on, on Arcanine. It's absurd. Team, we got Jinx up first. We go for the flamethrower. We go for the air slash against the slow bro. Flamethrower again on the Alakazam and same thing for the Espeon. Flamethrower also destroys the Mr. Mime. And so we've gotten ourselves uh, one of our last. Yeah, he's just, what's his, he's not super over level. Alakazam but... and same thing for the Espeon. Flamethrower also destroys. 
destroys the Charizard's doing well here. Sorry, we've got ourselves uh, one of our last few badges. Now we head over to, I guess, Cinnabar Island. This is where we have to go and take on Blaine. He's a bunch of fire-type Pokemon. And I'm so curious to see how this fight goes. So I decided to purchase myself a Gengar because I thought, hey, let's get a Gengar into the oh, team. Oh, he gets a Gengar. That's an inch. I mean... I feel like now he's gonna have no problems. I don't know why he would know to go Gengar, but he did. I mean, more power to him. We don't really have a lot of variety, so let's get something else in there. And that's what we did. So with the help of Gengar and a bunch of air slashes from Charizard, we take down his whole squad in relative. Is it Charizard? Ease. Next though is the final gym. <laughs> that's the the critiques I have on this video are like his like his like pronunciation of Pokemon. That's about it. And the 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 I wish he was a little more clear about oh I spent a bunch of money on RP All, or like how long this took. Also his dinner status is gone which implies that he's been at this for over a week now, at least, uh, maybe longer. I, I kind of wish he did the timeline a little more, but, but like, I understand. Honestly, I fucking, that, that shit can be a pain. I'm not... I'm not one to like talk on like high editing and stuff. Badge. This is going to be against the man you guys all know. It's Giovanni. So here's his squad. We go for Aqua Tail from Blastoise onto his Ductrio, which takes it down. Next up is going to be Aqua Tail against the Nido Queen. Same thing here. We're able to do a ridiculous amount of damage, but it's not enough. So Venusaur comes with the Seed Bomb against the Rhyferior, which does almost half its HP, which is incredible and eventually does take it down. Blastoise comes back out against the Nido King and destroys it in the end. And then Blastoise also finishes off the Rhydon. So we have our last gym badge, which means now it's time for the Elite Four, baby. Okay. So we go up here and of course okay. our. More st Once again, just more storyline stuff. I kind of wish there was more MMO progress versus just storyline progress like at this point like the video kind of just does become oh i played um you know pokemon emerald and fire red here's my progress uh, i feel like it's a little too our, our fella our best friend gary you know, is here ready to fight us a little too vanilla a little too we start off with the air slash it feels like a more iconic evolution for him in this case but it's time to take on the elite four of this region which of course is going to be a i guess an elite four you guys have seen many times before and that i've battled many times before laurel starts off with the cloister it also has 320k pokemon pokeyen now what do you have before we start, okay so we he has 732k here. I, his Pokeyen stack is wildly jumping. Um, I think he has to be taking like donations from viewers, which once again is fine. But I think it's like, I wish he would be clear about. I think you gotta if you're doing like a oh I played 100 days. Here's the progress. I think you have to be like yeah I took a lot of donations and like I was like this isn't progress that a normal player could reasonably make, which I don't. I don't know. I don't like that. We go up here, and of course, our our, our, fella, maybe it's, our best friend. Gary. It's not what he's trying to portray, but I could I could definitely see someone making that argument. Like, oh, like it's a hundred. If it's a hundred days video, like it's a progress video, you know. Three. And you're showing just genuine progress, but I don't know. I don't know if it's that deep or that crazy. Is here. I would have actually expected the squad is all we really need to do. Be a, I guess an elite four. You guys have seen the. Is it that big of a deal? You could argue. Would I ever leave like a negative comment saying blah blah blah? blah? No, probably not. <laughs> you know, I feel like people who leave negative comments on YouTube videos are. Uh, pretty special kind of person but it depends obviously if it's a nice polite criticism you know many times before and then i've battled many times before laura starts off with the cloister we air slash it in the beginning especially i want to preface against the kanto elite four stealth rock is so good uh even like way better um i dude stealth rock against kanto e4 is so so good we've got lorelei uh if you picked venusaur your rival as charizard we've got multiple dragonites running it around holy shit man um Using Stealth Rock setters against the Kanto Elite Four is so good. The best Air Slash also on top of the These rest of the best. full team, man. Leaving only really Dugong to be defeated by a bunch of Seed Bombs from Minasaur, which was perfect. And I also decided to purchase a bunch of items like Leftover, Choice Scarves, Choice Bands, and stuff like that. Yeah, you, dude, that, this is, wait, once again, using your Pokeyen, you probably shouldn't have this much by, by then, though, is the moon. Like, not everyone, people aren't going to be able to have, like, Leftovers, Choice Scarves, Choice Bands, all the, this is so much, right? Of the, like, second E4. Um, it's so good though. You can always, if, if you want to, I really recommend like buying choice items or leftovers and stuff for your, for, for even your first D4, if you have the money, you can always sell them back and break even or lose like 5k. It's super worth it for the benefit. Or you can just keep them for later down the line for like more of your progress or PVP. Like buying uh, stable items like that is, is really, really good. That I equipped onto our team. Like for It can be scary to do so because like choice bands like 100k, but you can always resell it. So keep that in mind. For example, in this case, our Charizard, I think is choice scarfed and is not Charizard. able to use, uh, you know, more than one move at a time. So we then use i don't like the choice scarf on charizard here choice scarf's only going to be good like charizard's already going to outspeed everything um and everything in the elite four especially at that level um the only thing it's not outspeeding is like maybe uh agatha's gengar that's like about it uh, you shouldn't choice scarf here who's gengar with hypnosis as well as dream eater because it puts him to sleep and then we're able to do a ridiculous amount of damage dream eater tech kind of underutilized in stories kind of cool kind of but but i love it i love it i respect Damage. dream eater flamethrower is enough though from uh, i guess charizard to take down the steelix and same thing against the hitmon lee which we're able to also the burn, get burn is on. huge Sorry, on lee i think that i think that lee has stone edge the fact that he burned from, uh, let's see if we charizard see uh no we don't see it do we see a move from him on lee did he, did he use something in this and then we're able to do a ridiculous amount of damage flamethrower is enough though from uh, i guess charizard to take down the steelix it charges at 181 hp here and same thing he was rock slide lee, yeah which we're able to this fucking hitmon lee Dude, wait, that burn was so lucky. 
Look at, so this Charizard's at 97 HP here. I'm pretty sure if Hitmonlee doesn't get burned there, I don't think it kills, but it would put Charizard like 1 HP. Um, him being four times weak to Rock Slide here and tanking the Rock Slide from the... Oh, uh, man. The that's on, sorry, that's why Charizard's it. not good, especially in the Elite Four. Charizard gets destroyed. There's so many Stone Edges and Rock Slides in the Kanto E4. Next up, though, is going Four to times be... weak to Rock is shit. He well. In PVM and in PvP, obviously. That's why Charizard's totally gated out of PvP. We need heavy... I would love Heavy Duty Poots in the game. It's going to be uh, Agatha. Her team, though, is a little annoying. We go for the Dark Pulse here. So Having Gengar for Agatha is really good. I feel like it's it's worth the, the neutral trades. I think you do a lot more damage. Running things off with our Gengar, which is able to do a lot of damage. However, she has a Gengar as well. And I'm going to be real. This Gengar took forever to defeat. But her Gengar is by far her scariest Pokemon. Um, it's frail, but it's just fast and strong. Eventually, we take him down with Charizard. We go for Heavy Slam with our boy Snorlax, which is taking down the uh, the Arbok, leaving really only two Pokemon here. The first one is, of course, Crobat. The next one is Weezing, which by full. Eventually, he also hasn't mentioned unless i miss it it's possible i miss it he hasn't mentioned the fact that you get healed after every single gym leader that's a pretty important like thing against the elite fours in pokemon no we reach lance he is of course going to be the last elite four member his aerodactyl took forever to defeat but eventually we took it down and then it's mostly just relying on gengar as well as charizard to air slash and shadow ball their way through his team charizard leaving only really blue left now and of course he has himself a pidgeotto he has uh as well as a look at all these pokemon weak to Fucking stealth rocks, dude. Gyarados, Charizard, Leafeon. Is that Pidgeot? Dude, everything on his team. You break Rhyperior's... Does it get sturdy? It might not. Yes, the same team we've seen before, um, right? The Rhyperior... Zam takes enough damage to break its focus sash. Dude, like, Stealth Rock is so good against this team. Like, five out of six Pokemon get destroyed Superior, by it. Dalakazam, all that sort of stuff. So and eventually good. eventually, we defeat all of them as well, with just the help of, I guess, Snorlax, Charizard, and the rest of them. Eventually, I also decide, hey, let's try out... Oh, he's doing randoms! Okay, I, 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 wish, he, I wish he did more... MMO end game stuff. I wish he did more shiny hunting, more PvP, etc. Some, I guess, competitive battles because the game does have PvP as mentioned. I guess competitive battles. Previously, but I'm gonna be real. Fair. I am really bad at competitive battling. It's it's really hard. I wanna I wanna preface to, like, dude. Even when I like take a break from a certain tier and come back years or months later, dude, I'll lose like six games in a row. Like as like, it's you gotta. Pokemon PvP is hard. You have to like throw your ego aside, even if you've been playing Pokemon for like 20 years and just be willing to lose. It's tough. It's a lot to adjust to. It's a very unique metagame. It's totally wildly different from any other Pokemon's balancing. You can't just look at Black White Smogan. It's wildly different. Very, 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 very like Pokemon was such a unique, it's truly its own Pokemon game. I did not stand a chance. So I decided to let's go it's to Unova tough. instead and do a bit of exploring. But at this point, he goes to another region. Point that Dude is a monster. That's where the journey is going to end. Welcome to wait, it just it just ends wait, wait, wait it just ends so fast okay dude's a monster um did a bunch of regions i kind of wish he did more like mmo gameplay and mmo progress it this did feel a ton this did feel a ton like just like oh i played through pokemon emerald and pokemon fire red um but there was some elements weaved in i kind of wish a little more but like this is a fantastic i want to preface this is a fantastic beginner video for pokemon uh done by a, a very very high tier pokemon player he had a lot of knowledge um way more than me he probably has way more pokemon knowledge than me um i do have a lot of pokey much more pokey mmo knowledge and i do feel like um there's like a lot of mistakes so I can hopefully this video was entertaining and interesting to you guys definitely go check him out i'll be linking him again um, go check out Ruffled Rallet Plays and go like and subscribe to the video. Give him some proper love and appreciation. Um, I don't know if this is also, I don't know if he copy pasted the same description from his Pokey Engine video or if this is just a, uh, a YouTube glitch. YouTube does this thing where if you like click around videos, it'll like carry the text over sometimes. So this very much might just be like a YouTube glitch or it's the same. He copied the same description from his Pokey Engine 100 days. Um, and even if that's the case, Dude, being a full-time content creator is exhausting. Sometimes these mistakes just happen. It's not a big deal. Um, really cool video. Really good for beginners. Really fun. Uh, a really fair line of progress. Really interesting. Yeah, I think it was a pretty cool video. Obviously, I had some issues with it. Like, I wish... I wish he would have like prefaced like, "Hey, I either bought a bunch of RP or my viewers gave me a shit ton of money." Is this like what he did here was not normal player progress? There was a lot more stuff going on. Um. Yeah, I think there was um I think there was a lot of uh kind of background stuff going on. Like a lot of a lot of donations, a lot of money jump. Or maybe maybe he grinded for Pokey and off camera and I would have loved to at least heard him talk about that. But anyways, that's my thoughts. Great video. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed it, like his video, subscribe to me, subscribe to him. Discord down below if you care about it. Uh follow me on Twitch for streams Monday through Thursday at 12 p.m. ET. I'm not ending stream right now, don't worry, stream. Uh if you want to go above and beyond YouTube memberships, Switch Prime, Switch subs, and PayPal slash Venmo donations, do help a ton and allow me to make more content. I make Pokemon mode videos every single day and stream four days a week uh, on Twitch and on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you guys later. Peace.